In this video, we are going to look at gas laws practice number one. And the first problem is a Boyle's law problem. Uh, it says the volume of gas at 99 kilopascals is 300 milliliters. If the pressure increases to 188 kilopascals, what is the final volume? Um, and so it tells us which equation we need to use here, but even if we didn't know this is Boyle's law problem, we can look at the equation and say the volume of gas at 99 kilopascals, well we know kilopascals is the unit of pressure, um, is 300 milliliters, and we know milliliters is the unit of volume. So, and we know these are our initial pressure and volume, we're starting here, so this is our P1 and our V1. If the pressure is, increases to 188 kilopascals, so this is our P2 value, what is the final volume? So we're looking for our V2 value. Um, so we can label all the variables in the problem, and then we know we need to use uh, an equation that has two pressures and two volumes. So if we write our gas law, uh, PV over in T, and we know we're just going to use P times V. So we're going to use P1, V1 equals P2 times V2. So we know that that's the gas law that we need to use here. Even if we don't remember that that is called Boyle's law, we know we need to use P1, V1 equals P2, V2. And we're solving for V2. So let's substitute in our values. So P1 uh, is 99 kilopascals times V1 is 300 milliliters equals P2, which is 188 kilopascals, and our units of pressure are the same, so we are good there. If they were not the same, we would need to convert one of our units of pressure to be the same as the other, times V2, which we don't know what V2 is, so we're going to put in X, so V2 equals X for right now. Alright, so our units of kilopascals are going to cancel out, and we're going to be left with our units on our final answer being in milliliters. So I'm going to go ahead and put blank milliliters here, so when we get x, we can put in x equals blank milliliters. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and combine some of these values and take out my units, so 99 times 300 equals 188 times x. Uh, and then I know that I'm to move 188 to the other side, I'm going to need to divide by 188. So before I do anything with my calculator, I'm going to go ahead and move that to the other side. So this is going to cancel out. X is going to be equal to 99 times 300 divided by 188. So I'm going to do that in my calculator. 99 times 300, hit enter on that, divided by 188. And that gives me 157.97, uh, and then I'm going to round this third decimal point, 979. And this answer is in milliliters. So I am looking for an answer up here that is very close to my answer, 157.9. Uh, and the one that's by far the closest is C, 158 milliliters. So that is my final answer. Our next question is also a Boyle's Law question. It says the pressure of a sample of helium in a 1 liter container is 0.988 atm. So I know atm is a unit of pressure. It also tells me this is pressure, so I'm going to put P. And then I know liters is a unit of volume, so I'm going to put V next to that. And the pressure of helium in a 1 liter container is 0.9988 atm. So this is our P1 and our V1 these two values go together. What is the new pressure? So I know I'm being asked to find P2, so I'm going to put P2 equals question mark, if the sample is placed in a 2 liter container. So we're changing our volume from 1 liter to 2 liters, so this is our V2 value. So we have our P1, our V1, and we're looking for our P2, we have our V2. So we know that we need to use out of PV over NT, we just need P and V, so we're going to use P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. Alright, so let's substitute in some values. Our P1 is 0 0.988 atm. Uh, 
times our V1 value, which is one liter, equals P2, which we don't know what P2 is. We're going to put an X uh, times V2, which is two liters. Okay, uh, so we know that our units of our liters for our volumes and our pressure is going to come out in ATM because our units of pressure are currently in ATMs. So our value of X is going to be equal to some number of ATMs. I'm going to go through and take out my units now to make it a little bit easier to look at the algebra. 0 0.988 times 1 equals 2X. This is a pretty simple problem from here on out. All we need to do to get x by itself is to divide by 2 on both sides. So then we have x equals 0.988 times 1 divided by 2. So 0.988 times 1 is still 0.988. So all that we need to do here is divide by 2. And that gives us 0 0.494. And of course our units are ATMs. So we're looking for an answer that's very similar to what we got. 0.494, that is exactly what letter A is. So letter A is our correct answer. All right, number three says a sample of neon gas occupies 0 0.220 liters at 0 0.860 ATMs. So we have a volume, a V1 value, and we have a pressure, a P1 value. What will be the volume? So we're looking for a second volume, V2, at 29.2 kilopascals. So here we have a second pressure, P2, but instead of it being in ATMs, it's given in kilopascals. So before we plug into our equation, we are going to have to convert our units of pressure. We either need to convert kilopascals to ATMs or ATMs to kilopascals. And it doesn't really matter which way you do it, but I always like to convert two ATMs because our gas constant on our formula sheet is given um, with ATMs as the unit of pressure, which will become important when we're using the ideal gas law later. So I always like to convert my units of pressure into ATMs, and one ATM is equal to 101 kilopascals. And you can use these conversion factors on your quiz. I think they are given to you at the top of your quiz. One ATM equals 101 kilopascals. So what we're going to do here is a little bit of dimensional analysis. We're going to do 29.2 kilopascals, and we're going to put kilopascals on bottom and ATM on top. Okay, then we match up our units. One ATM equals 101 kilopascals. So then when we do our dimensional analysis, we're doing 29.2 divided by 101, which gives us 0 0.2891 ATM. Notice I am keeping several decimal places here because I don't want to end up with a rounding error in my answer. So a good rule of thumb is to hold on to at least four, three or four decimal places. Here I probably could have done three because my other pressure is given with three decimal places. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and keep four, it won't hurt anything. So this is our P2 value in ATMs. So now that we have both those values, we can use Boyle's Law. P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. And we'll substitute in. Uh, our P1 value is 0 0.860, 0 0.860 ATM, times our V1 value is 0 0.220 liters, equals P2, uh, which is right here, 0 0.2891 ATM, times our V2 value, which we don't know, so we're going to put that as X. Now we're going to go through and look at our units. Our ATMs are going to cancel because we have one on either side. And then our answer is going to come out in liters. So our V2 value is going to be equal to some number of liters. So let's go ahead and take out our units so we can do our algebra. 0 0.86, leave off that third significant figure, times 0 0.22 equals 0.2891x. 
So to isolate x, we need to divide by the 0 0.2891, and we need to do that on both sides. So this cancels out, and we're left with x equals 0.86 times 0.22 divided by 0.2891. 0.86 times 0.22, and then I'm going to do divided by 0.2891. And that gives me 0 0.6544, uh, and our units are liters. Now we're going to just look for the answer that is as close as possible to this. Um, and looking up at my answers, it actually looks like there must be a typo. Um, because I think letter B should be 0 0.657. 65 is pretty close to our answer. Um, just to double check, we'll go back and check our work. ATMs on both sides. 0.2891. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's probably B, but I think this is probably a typo in the quiz. So 0 0.65 liters would be our answer. Now even though this answer is slightly off, um, this could be, well first of all, the decimal place off, I think it's just a typo. I think letter B should say 0 0.0657. This is still not exactly what we got, but this is likely due to our conversion uh, from kilopascals to ATM. We are rounding to just three significant figures here, and if we were to carry out the ATM to kilopascals conversion, one ATM equals actually closer to 101.3 kilopascals, which probably accounts for this slight difference in our answer. But our answer is very similar. Um, Oh, I wrote it wrong again. 0 0.657 is very, very close to 0 0.654. So that is indeed the correct answer here.